Hey, I'm Jordan Burke. <laughs> I'm <rem> <laughs> No. I'm rem Don't use that against me, Marcus. Help. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm Jordan Burke. And I'm Kristen Priola. And this is Saints and Sages. Where we talk about the wisdom of the saints and how it's relevant for you. And this took like five takes, but I'm happy that <laughs> we're finally going. I it again. <laughs> I was making jokes. It wasn't helpful at all. <sighs> uh, something really important coming up. Something really special. February 20th. Can you tell us what that is? It's going to be the best time of your life if you come. Guaranteed. Like, um, what was that old commercial? It was for Men's, men's Warehouse. I guarantee it. Yes. Just, <laughs> just what Jordan said. Guaranteed fun. Um, and also spiritual transformation. So mm, even good, better than good men's things, warehouse. Good things to look forward to on February 20th is the silent retreat. So that's for young adults ages 18 to 35. We would love to see you there and your friends, your family, your loved ones can come to their ages 18 to 35. Can I say so. something really beautiful about that or what I think is beautiful about that? Please. So it's going to be a really profound experience. Um, they always are these silent retreats, no matter who does them. But it's something really special about the way that we do it is that we have a community for you afterwards. So if you're hearing this and you're not already a member of Firelight and you're kind of trying to consider it, um, come, come to the silent retreat and, and see how you feel and then know that you have a community to go to afterwards if you so choose. I think that uh, where a lot of these programs fail um, is that, you know, people get this like spiritual high and then they have nowhere to go. They have nothing to sustain them. They have nothing to feed them. They have nothing, you know, what is our bottle? Live, light, and lead, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, this is built into the process. So I really enjoy the fact that we have this, hey, let's go get spiritually high, so to speak, for, you know, for lack of a better phrase. And then, we have a community for you. We have a place for you afterwards where you can continue to grow. You can continue to feed that fire. So, yeah. And the great news is that you can be anywhere and yeah. be a part of our community. And it's somewhere Literally. you can land mm -hmm. after like he's like Jordan saying after the retreat is said and done. And you've had that experience, which you definitely will at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Hansville, Alabama. It's a gorgeous location. Not only that, but it's just a time to really connect with the Lord in silence, which is so unheard of, you know, outside of just adoration. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it's just a noisy world. And mm -hmm. so I need a lot more time for silence in my life. And, and you know what? Perfect opportunity. It's practically free. It is. I, 20 bucks. It's, I mean, <laughs> come on. We're throwing in food. Lunch and dinner. We're throwing in a books right I think yeah annoying book yeah yeah well handshakes and hugs that's included in the and a price. community to follow and a community to follow well worth it. yeah you, all you have to do is pay shipping and handling which is yourself if you're <laughs> outside of alabama and other than that you're good to go it's true so join us with that out of the way let us begin to talk about saint blaze yes and funny enough he was not set on fire no he wasn't and it's not even spelt like b-l-a-z-e it's B-A-I-S-E. However, his heart was on fire, set ablaze with the Holy Spirit. Ooh, that right? was good. We're going right? to call you Segway Sally. No, I like that. That was really good. I like that. Forever Segway Sally. He was, uh, so he lived in the fourth century. This is just some background here. Born into a noble family. And he, in his youth, he studied philosophy and medicine. He was actually, I don't know if he, I, we were talking before the show, as we always do. And I, I called him a philosopher. I don't know if he's technically qualified or quantified as a philosopher, but he studied philosophy. He was, however, most definitely a doctor in terms of medicine. Right. He was well educated, yeah. a physician at that time. He knew a lot and he had the opportunity. He was he came from a wealthy family, mm -hmm. an Armenian family. And so born into that nobility, he had the opportunity to be educated and he took it seriously. So becoming a doctor, he had... Um, the ability to know a lot about medicine mm -hmm. and healing and that kind of thing. But later on, he was then called by God to be a priest. Yeah, a priest and then a bishop. And what's really interesting, this is where we kind of get into the meat and potatoes of the story, but he lived in a time where there was heavy religious persecution. The governors um, worshiped pagan gods and, it, it, you know, religious persecution is exactly how it sounds. And so eventually he said, okay, if I'm going to survive and continue this ministry, I need to go literally hide in a cave out in the woods out in a cave and uh this is where i this is where it gets interesting to me yes well at the time he was the bishop <laughs> yeah. of sabase oh yes thank you thank armenia you. Yeah. which yeah. is modern day turkey mm -hmm. and he he was 
really frustrated with the governor of Cappadocia um, for being being tyrannical. I don't know if that's the right word, but he was pretty yeah, narrow minded about Christianity. Yeah, he and was. so with that, he attempted to arrest Bishop yep. Blaze. Yep. And so that's when he what an ran. Awesome name, by the way, Bishop, Bishop Blaze. Blaze. I like that. That's, that's really gonna be good. my rap name. <laughs> and so uh, Maggie's giving me looks now, throwing me off. So, <laughs> so he's in the cave. So he goes and hides in the cave. And this is where it's so interesting because he's he he essentially becomes a hermit, and so the only only life around him is wild animals. And when I say wild animals, I literally mean wolves, bears, deer. Any type of forest animal then becomes his friend. So you didn't say lions, tigers, and bears. No, I was oh tempted to. But I, 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 refrained. I almost thought you were. But you didn't. I refrained. Yeah. Okay. No, I can't be that predictable. <laughs> I try not to be that predictable. But so the, these animals become his friends, which is fascinating. It's very St. Francis esque mm. in a way. Um, One with the wildlife. And by the way, this isn't the first time we've heard about this with saints. I mean, St. Anthony, you mentioned in, I think, the last show, mm -hmm. preached to the fish. Yeah. In, in a river. So there's there's most definitely a theme of um, animal friendship with quite a few saints, which is very interesting. It's beautiful, actually. Yeah. The likeness that we have with creation. Yeah, and that's to a good be point. close to crea creation is being close to our creator, too. So. That is a very good point. Yeah, he lived amongst the animals. He did. And he would bless them and they would bring him food, which is awesome. So nowadays we have DoorDash. Back then he had a bear, which is like, <laughs> hey, here you go, bud. Here's the food. Um, so they'd bring him food, they'd obey him. And it, there's one story that says that uh, a deer was injured by a hunter. He healed the deer, uh, miraculously healed the deer. Um, and then eventually, finally, a hunter found him and was, the story goes, he was in the cave doing his thing. He was praying. Praying, surrounded by animals. And again, imagine there's this guy. This was like the regular for him. Yeah. In a cave, praying and surrounding him. By bears. Bears. Wolves. wolves deer. All this, foxes, these animals. Probably some bunnies. I don't know. What else is in the forest? Birds, <laughs> Birds. probably. I don't like squirrels. the snow. Yeah, squirrels. <laughs> You know, squirrels, Maybe. squirrels are heathens. They Maybe probably just weren't the there, bears. but yeah, it's probably probably just the bears. I don't know. And so the the hunter was terrified and goes and reports St. Blaze to the governor. At this point, soldiers come, they arrest him, and it's actually this is a lot of this is oral tradition. I, I probably should have started with, but uh written in oral tradition, but tradition. And uh the soldiers were it was said that they were actually terrified because when they arrested him, the animals followed them. So the animals followed the entire way um, back into town, into town. And the soldiers were so terrified. And Blaze said, look, they're not going to hurt you. And he turns around and tells the animals, go back to the forest. And they go back to the forest. Some of the stories state that the animals were were actually were. I don't know how true this is. Again, this is a tradition, but were some of them were visibly distraught that he, you know, like when you can tell when a dog is sad, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of a thing is probably more. Um, they probably were more trying accurate. to protect. They were trying to protect Bishop yeah. Blaze. Yeah. And the interesting part is actually on the way to the village, on the way to yep. his trial, yep. because at the time, like we said, the governor was not fond of Christians and wanted to him to be put on trial for, you know, hiding out in this cave. There was actually a poor woman, a beggar on the way who had a pig and she was really distraught because a wolf had actually taken her pig. Mm -hmm. And so Bishop Blaze, being the really cool dude that he was, was like, that's not okay. And he told the wolf to bring the pig back. Yeah. And so the wolf actually did. He seized <laughs> and brought the pig back to the woman. And she was absolutely beside herself. She uh -huh. was ecstatic, you know, and so she later on apparently gifted him with two or it might have been in that moment it must have been in, in that moment the on the moment, way yeah. gifted him with two candles as a thank you mm -hmm. for saving her pig her beloved pig i don't yeah. know what the relationship well, was ba but back then i mean this needed is, the pig this fourth century fourth fifth you know century as we know with a lot of different even in biblical times um animal particularly animal property was very very their important. livelihood yeah it was their livelihood so mm. donkeys those sorts of things it wasn't just something to move around it, it, it was really their livelihood so losing a pig could have been a, a tremendous um, tremendous deal so yeah no so she gives him the candles and if for those who are familiar with saint blaze or have ever seen the blessing of the throat uh, at mass with the two candles that's where the candle comes from the sacramental which i'll talk about in a second but now you must be thinking 
Well, what about the throat? He's a patron saint of wild animals. We get that at this point. <laughs> but also diseases, especially the diseases of the of throat. The throat. Mm-hmm. Where does that come from? Yeah, what is this day that we all celebrate? It's so interesting plays? because it seems like he saved all of it. I mean, clearly he didn't save his miracles, but a lot of the miracles that are really talked about happened on this road to his eventual, spoiler alert, martyrdom. But uh, his deathbed. it's interesting to think that it was like one after the other, because what happens next after the pig or sometime in the same, you know, they have to get him from the woods to the city. So it's it is really, truly a, a long track. track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Along that same path, he comes across a mother who has a child who's choking, choking on supposedly a fish bone. Mm-hmm. And so he was suffering from that choking. And then while choking, she brought him to Bishop Blaze and he blessed him and prayed over him and he was restored to health yep. and he was healed yep. because in that moment he was going to die from choking on this fish bone which I've never choked like that before I've seen it in movies of course but I'm sure you guys can imagine fish bones are not that I soft. guarantee you that there are some people who are listening right now who've accidentally started eating a fish bone before I'm actually fun fact. I'm allergic to fish, but I didn't know that when I was when I was younger, I used to be able to eat it. It's an allergy that I developed what do you, when I was later. Like do during Lent or suffer. What do you eat? Like pizza every Friday? <laughs> suffer. Oh my god, that's what I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, fish bones. If you don't get them all out of the meat, you know it's it's a sketchy. That's a sketchy thing. Those can be like knives going down the throat. So I guarantee you there's some people listening now who are like, oh, yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> so so hence the tradition of blessing throats because this boy came and needed to be healed. And it was a miracle. He yeah. was healed in that moment um, by Bishop Blaze's blessing. Yeah. As the story goes. So there you go. So now we're going to get into his martyrdom. But before we started that, I wanted to briefly touch on because it is a good teaching moment. Sacramentals, because I it was helpful for me to hear this again clarify what that actually is so the blessing of a throat is a sacramental which is different than a sacrament right sacrament Mm -hmm. sacramental sacramental is anything set apart by the church that brings about good thoughts and increases piety and devotion so sign of the cross sacramental holy water sacramental bless salt sacramental those are all sacramentals sacraments we all know what those are you know that's that's very clear Mm -hmm. yes precisely but sacramentals are not the same they're just Something something else set apart by the church that bring or increase piety and devotion. That's all I want to say on that. Really simple. But we Super thought simple. you guys might enjoy listening. Yeah. Yeah. Learning yeah. about that. Yep. Fun fact. I had never heard it. Thanks to Sense and Fidelis for for making it that clear of a of a definition. It's pretty I, distinct. I'd never heard it. Yeah, put that mm-hmm. way before. Yep. So now now we get into he's the on his way yeah and he finally arrives to his jail cell yeah and it's dark and cold good thing he has those two candles that the woman <laughs> yeah. gave him um in fact unfortunately the judge advised him that he could actually be saved and it would be fine if he just had a pinch of incense offered to the images of caesar and the gods of rome it could win him his freedom and he would be set Ready to go. We'll send you on your way if you just go ahead and worship this God. It's fine. You can do this. Well, Bishop Blaze, the faithful Christian that he was, courageously said, no, yeah. absolutely not. So buzz off, buddy. I only worship my God yep. and I will not worship this so God. He's brought before the pagan governor and the governor basically does exactly what you said. He reiterates it and says, hey, we'll let you go. Super simple. All you, all you got to do, you just got to worship my God. That's all, you know? He's got to do it a little bit of incense. Yeah, just bad out. A little incense. And he, he says, not going to happen. So they beat him. And the beating... Cruelly, actually. Yeah, really cruelly. They essentially tie him to a pillar and start tearing out his flesh with meat combs. Couldn't really find out... Or what, wool combs. I read wool, possibly meat. Uh, I said meat. I meant, I'm sorry. Kind, I meant metal combs. Metal co- combs yeah. that were used to... Yeah. Yeah, meat the combs. wool combs. Goodness gracious. I don't know what kind of meat comb. Yeah, if you if you imagine if you imagine I've seen them before in, in a cooking shop. That's why my brain keeps uh, going there. Okay. But if you imagine like Wolverine's claws. That's actually really good. I'm glad you said that. That gave me a good that's idea. That's essentially what it looks like. Ow? These, yeah, yeah. Just But ow? I think they were actually made for wool. Yeah, wool to like get the wool out yeah. of the yep. animal, I think. So they tear at his flesh and uh they ask him again, hey, are you gonna worship these gods? He says so. With he the actually, torn flesh. Mm-hmm. 
So we, oh, and this is something he was thrown into a lake, right? I didn't read about that. Okay, that was before he was torn. Oh, okay. His flesh was torn. We're getting the the torture, you know, minor detail. I just wanted to say that (laughs) he must have been cold, our our torture messed up, and then. But it was, but it was, it was written that he actually took the tearing of the flesh. All he did was look to heaven and only moaned in pain one time. Wow. Yeah. So the governor was actually ticked about it because he was expecting. Because he was so grace filled. It ah, must have been the strength of God. There's yeah, no way someone can be combed yeah. like that with yeah. Wolverine combs. <laughs> combed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they tell him again, hey, are you going to worship God? He says, no. He says, do you indeed fancy that by torture you can enforce to forsake my Lord and my God? You are indeed wrong. No pain shall separate me from my Jesus. Governor was enraged and says, you know what, dude? Off with his head. Forget it. Yep. And and uh, essentially tortures him a little bit more and then beheads him. And that was the end of it. So Bishop Blaze died in 316, February mm-hmm. 3rd. That's the day that we celebrate the blessing of the throats and his feast day, St. Blaze's Day. And that's honestly a really intense way to leave this earth. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity that he had there, that conviction he must have had and the faith he must have had in God in that moment. It's like everything boiled down to that moment for him, right? His whole life's journey of, you know, becoming a priest first and then a bishop and then leading other people to to Jesus, running and hiding, um, fleeing and then praying as a hermit. His whole life was like geared up for this moment of saying, yes, Lord, amongst these people who are about to torture him and then ended up torturing him for God. This is something I ran across about him later because of his martyrdom. And it's funny that I mentioned Wolverine because that wasn't actually a part of the plan, but he's a part of the 14 Holy Helpers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in my notes, I wrote the Catholic Avengers. And I was wondering what that was. Yeah. It's like the Catholic event. The 14 Holy Hel- Helpers are Is like, Wolverine an Avenger? Though? I don't know. I don't, I don't understand the different. Yeah, Those I don't, claws. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have no clue. But so, yeah. So what are, do you have? You we were, you, were, you had more information on the 14 Holy Helpers than I did. Well, it's just they became really popular and well known in the Middle Ages mm-hmm. because similar to St. Blaise, he so in the Middle Ages, you know, the plague and everything, people were terrified of having, you know, throat problems because they knew that was a sign. Like yeah, I might have gotten the, the plague. Yeah. And so they depicted a lot of their artwork as um, uh, as honoring St. Blaise because they asked for his intercession a lot um, to protect them. Mm-hmm. And so he is known as one of the 14 holy helpers along with other 14 or 13 saints who are just part of everyday life, ordinary life, uh, well-rounded holiness. Yeah. And so they Many have the a martyrs. lot of attributes. What did you say? Many of the martyrs, if not all of them. I thought Many all of them. Many of them. I think, I don't know that. I'm not sure. Probably so. Someone can a lot of them check were us. martyrs. Yeah. Um, but they're known as the 14 holy helpers and he's one of them. Yeah. And he's often depicted in those images, by the way, I just remembered with those same combs the combs and the candles that's right that are crossed that's right that's right and in fact the candles that are crossed um as a representation from the gift from that woman who was thanking him for saving his pig from the wolf um it's like the cross you know when the candles are crossed over around our necks Mm -hmm. um it's it's representative of the cross of christ and then also the little red ribbon that's usually wrapped around the two candles is representing um bloodshed yeah in martyrdom yeah that's a fun thing i think we mentioned that with the um candles and the on the headpiece crown crown saint lucy was it saint lucy Anyway, Another saint episode. We so talked here's about it. yeah. So if you want to know what I'm trying to say, but I can't figure it out, if, you, if you're shouting at the radio, I apologize. <laughs> Go listen to our other episodes. Essentially, we had talked about this on one of our previous episodes, where the symbolism is super important, and it and it is actually really instrumental to the faith in a lot of ways. Oh, like the white and the red. Is Correct. That what you're yeah, to? that's what I'm getting to. Hmm. So the um, the red most often you can always associate with martyrdom. Now, if you think about it and you go back and you look at different like paintings, church paintings in particular, that's a common theme. So that gives you kind of, it's kind of a cool party trick. Like, hey, come look at this, come <laughs> if look you're at this ever, painting. If you know you're what that symbolizes? In Europe. That symbolizes martyrdom. You know what that symbolizes? You know, that sort of a thing. So red, ribbons, red usually is a, almost always symbolizes martyrdom. White almost always symbolizes purity. some sort of purity. Perfect. Chastity. Yep. Yep. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so there's a couple other fun facts we have here. Um, 
well just one actually really and he's actually the patron saint of i found out dubrinvik croatia i'm glad you said it because there was no way i was going to pronounce that. i don't know if i even did right but in 971 he appeared in a vision to a local actually it was the pastor of the local parish um warning that a venetian force was about to invade the town and so the townspeople responded with defensive measures they were ready for the attack because of um bishop blaze actually Such appeared cool to the pastor of that church saying like hey this is a warning and it was the um eve of his feast mm -hmm. day and they were about to have their candle mass and so he warned them um and lo and behold the venetians uh did not depart and they did not attack and so they they did depart they left the area and they did not attack is what i'm going to say and could because they lost the element of surprise yep. and that was through bishop blaze appearing yeah so to this day dubrinvik croatia has a cathedral and everything there um as a remembrance of saint blaze and you can find that in croatia if you're ever there and i'm really kind of sad that i didn't save my venetian blind joke until just now but well, why okay. don't you go ahead and tell us no nah, i mean <laughs> listen I, I tried it earlier and it didn't get any laughs so we're just gonna move on okay well so, <laughs> venetian blinds that's all you can make the connection yourself good one <laughs> 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 okay so okay so you're thinking what does this, this have a, to do with me <laughs> yeah this is a wild story as most saint stories are what the heck does it have to do with me Kristen? yeah that was a great story you just told me i really appreciate it your joke yeah. about venetian blinds is great what? but i need you to <laughs> tell me definitely yours. <laughs> i need you to tell me what does saint blaze have to do with my life today you know jordan that's really intense question because i don't know specifically your life but for all our listeners out there and maybe every humble christian could learn something possibly maybe but i will say this romans 10 9 and 10 it says this for if thou confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in thy heart that god hath raised him up from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart we believe unto justice but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so would That's you like the medieval version you know would you consider it fortitude in the confession of our faith Are you did i read that directly from my your notes? topic notes <laughs> Yes, Jordan. In fact, I do. Yeah, no, it's I mean, so important. It is. It is really important, and we see this over and over again with a lot of these saints who become martyrs. They have courage in their convictions. They have this fortitude in the confession of their faith. I'm glad you wrote it out that way because that's exactly what it is. And I think you know, I, I don't want to go all doomy, gloomy, but I think that we're facing some of that. I mean, we could say we have been facing it to an extent with so many people who, who I'm speaking to people now who still haven't been to mass in like months. six months six seven months you know haven't been they've been without the sacrament sacraments these sacraments been without without Jesus reconciliation and the yeah been without the eucharist and and having to remain firm in that sort of um i hesitate to say white martyrdom but you guys i hopefully you understand what i'm saying i mean that is a, a really hard spot to be in it's very difficult um and so having the conviction to continue to live out your faith even though the majority of it's been stripped from you. You're almost in a cave in some cases, hiding away like like St. Blaise was. Uh, and that's just really, you know, my heart goes out to you. It's it's not easy. It's not easy. So then what happens now? Like what is, what? Are, how does this apply for, for those who maybe aren't in that case? Like you and I are blessed to have mass. I've been going to daily mass. Yeah, I, I have been going to almost every day. But yeah. that period of time in March when we didn't have the opportunity, in our diocese well in my diocese it was heartbreaking rough. it yeah. was so rough i i felt completely stripped away from everything yeah. that i knew to be true and good and, and beautiful i had no idea that that could happen to me mm -hmm. you know it's like you don't know what you have until you've lost it type mm -hmm. of thing and it's true and i know some people are still suffering in that way i have family members and friends who cannot go to mass and still have not been able to receive yeah. our lord it's mind-blowing and there's no telling what's going to happen in the future and i think that his story is just a good way to say like hey you have to you have to be convicted you know, my pastor's talked about it a couple of times, or my, yeah, my pastor's talked about it a couple of times. He's basically said, are you prepared? Are you prepared if this, ha if we get another wave of lockdowns? More so to the fact that, you know, and I, I, I say it all the time, I work with guys on overcoming habitual sin. Are you prepared? Are you able to withstand sin? Not on your own, but you get what I'm saying, without the sacraments. You know, because if you're commit, if you commit a moral sin and you can't get to confession, 
what are you going to do? Right? So do you have the ability to, are, do you have the fortitude? Do you have the conviction, you know, in faith to do these sorts of things? If you cannot have these supercharged, these sacraments, these things that help you, that clearly help us. Well, and it's true. And to tie it with St. Blaise, he was a physician and then a priest and then a bishop. You know, this is an incredible trajectory for his life, sharing the good news of Jesus mm -hmm. with the people around him in his ability to love people while he was serving them right there, these other Christians and teaching the faith and evangelizing. And it was stripped away from him when this governor um, was saying, Persecuting. Him. Persecuting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No more Christians. So he had to run to a cave. Yeah. His whole life changed. Yeah. But he still had the conviction. And even when found in the cave, what? Conviction to the point of converting animals. What? Well, I don't I know if the animals were converted, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, truly. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking as you're saying this, he must have held mass on his own. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that that must mean that he probably had to create the host on his own or I have could no he idea. i don't know that's I mean, definitely we don't, something to speculate right i mean we don't know how long he was in the cave for True. did he go without and if he did then that goes to did our the point. animals go and or get yeah what he did? <laughs> back from the store <laughs> Came church back. supply we got you <laughs> got you bud don't worry about it oh, i'll man. put it on my tab thanks dear uh but get, honestly right? though right that that level of commitment to his faith that conviction that he had the fortitude that he had yeah um, in confession of his faith, he was willing to die for Jesus. And it's not, it's easier to just say that it rolls right off the tongue, right? Like martyr for the faith. Like I'm going to be a martyr for the faith. But what about in our pop culture today? Mm. Like pop culture is screaming at us, you know, be independent. You do you, whatever feels right. It's easy. Like that's what everybody's just like kind of, they think it's funny because I think a lot of the times our culture is like, I'm so independent, like I'm going to do my way. It's I'm unique, but really it's I'm, a bunch of lemmings following the same agenda. I'm so unique is <laughs> when everybody's moving in the same crowd towards the same direction. Right, <laughs> yeah. But the Lord is asking of us to be radically different, radically joyful amidst, amidst a lot of sorrow. Yeah. I mean, it can be tempting to be really sad and depressed if you're not able to go to mass that is so disheartening yeah. but the lord is calling us to something he's calling us to be like bishop blaze and being so convicted that even amidst all the darkness the darkness of his cave he was able to withstand that persecution and still believe that his god is god his lord is lord and, and he will not give up and you made another really good point that i don't want to skip over that you know again with society modern society people say i've heard guys say guys like to say it i don't know about girls i don't really hang out with girls but <laughs> I know the guys except my daughter but uh the guys like to say oh i'm ready to be a martyr but you brought up an interesting point society wants us to do these things and my question is always but are you willing to give up what you need to give up now mm. to become a saint because mm. you have to prepare your soul before you I, I told a guy the other day i said you should pray he said i pray to be a martyr i said you should pray to be a monk so when the martyr, when time for martyrdom comes, you're actually ready. And I wasn't trying to say like, you're not ready, but like you understand there's a process. Your soul has to be ready. Your heart has to be ready. Your mind has to be ready before you're martyred. So I like the point that you made, which is society says, do this, this, and this. And I want to say, be a martyr to society. Society says you need to have these things and do these things. Are you willing to give those things up? I don't know. Is this, you tell me, is this, is this imagery connecting? Yeah, it really is. Actually, it's really hitting home. That's why I'm like pondering. You're like wondering if I'm still here. I am. No, I, yeah, I can tell you're here. I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering like if this is even making sense. Yeah, so. it definitely is. And whether that's reputation or yeah. that's that job career that you're striving for, that you worked, you know, eight years for, and now they have, um, more a moral compass that is way against your christian beliefs and you're like actually can i work here mm -hmm. do i need to work a menial job just mm -hmm. to to be able to live out my christian faith that is tough stuff or, it's not easy or yeah the day-to-day -day yes stuff, you knew exactly I knew where i was, I was gonna going say, yeah because i love bringing it back to saint Teresa's little way yeah. you know it is the little things that add up to that big day for yep. bishop blaze or saint blaze it's not like overnight he was like yeah i'm gonna be martyred for the faith and when it happened he was ready to go like it wasn't an overnight thing it was every day saying yes to the lord mm -hmm. 
um when some when an animal i guess because i was gonna say when someone like <laughs> was rude but he wasn't around people but when an animal destroyed <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to just pause. You know what? Run with it. Run with it anyway. We got time. When an animal didn't bring him the food he needed that day, you know? Rude. Brought him brought him McDonald's. He really wanted Chipotle. I understand. McDonald's is anathema. What is this episode? But seriously, it must be so hard to live in that cave. I can't imagine. Well, animal like I friends. said, we, you gotta rely on truthfully, animals. we really don't know how long he was there. We don't know how he survived. We don't. We, there's a lot of details that aren't there. But again, it all circles back to this fortitude, this conviction. <laughs> And if you're going to take anything away from a story, I think it's just that like you have to be you have to be convicted. And here's another good reason why we'll go back to scripture. Matthew 10 32. I don't know if you guys know that in Matthew, it talks about the sparrows. I'm going to just read it. Actually, are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. Mm. If that doesn't convict you, I don't know what will. Yeah. Because I would hate to be denied by God yeah. in front of Jesus and all of the other saints in heaven. Yeah. Because he says, flee from me. I didn't ever know you. Yeah. You didn't serve me. You didn't love the poor. You weren't meek and humble. Yeah. You didn't spend time with me. I don't even know animals. you. Bye. Yeah, you didn't convert animals. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> next time <laughs> we'll have to <laughs> talk more about <laughs> um, actual life practicals and not just the animals. But hey, hey, you know, I didn't foresee it going into the direction with society and everything, but I think that was a really powerful. Praise point Jesus. That you Come Holy up. Spirit. Yeah. I pray that you guys have the faith to strive and abide all at once in the sacred heart of Jesus every single day with or without communion, um, with your spiritual communion and um, have have faith to carry on. Hey, you know, listen, it's been said a lot in the past few months and looking towards the future. And I mean, we never know. We never we never know. But it's the, the phrase floating around. And I totally believe it to be true is now is the time for saints to be made. And I, you know, now's the time for saints to be made and your story could be written right now. Hey, so-and-so, uh, didn't have so-and-so suffered through this period of time where they didn't have mass. They were not able to go to mass for nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months, two years, but they were convicted. And your yes to God matters today. And they, today they stayed strong no matter what. And you want to talk about a powerful story for future generations. Your story is being written right now. Mm. So, Want to pray the prayer that they pray over uh, your throats? You can. Okay, right. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, deliver us through the intercession of thy holy bishop and martyr, Blaise, from all evil of soul and body, especially from all ills of the throat, and grant us the grace to make a good confession in the confident hope of obtaining thy pardon and ever to praise with worthy lips thy most holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I and felt my voice drop, drop an octave. So this is, that already worked. What? I don't know. <laughs> Are you, oh, because of your throat feeling <laughs> yeah. better? Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. We've really just so loved having this show. And if you've loved it too, we would love for you. That's a lot of love right there. All in one sentence. To rate our show five stars on iTunes or wherever you listen to your pods. We'd love for you to share as well. You can email us at saintspod at myavala.com. That's saintspod at myavala.com. And um, I feel like an infomercial right and now. And if you didn't so. enjoy the show, <laughs> too bad. Yeah, let us know, actually. You can email us if you didn't enjoy the show and why. And we love to get better. So we like critique We, we as will well. accept, um, what is the, what's the phrase, appropriate feedback? Constructive, constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. But I know the difference. And I am quick to hit the delete button. So be constructive. <laughs> Um, but we are really grateful for you all listening and we hope to see you at the silent retreat. St. Blaze. Pray for us. Bye. Bye.